Could it be a new clue? What the FBI confiscated from Brian Laundrie's house, it could help track him down. Starting off October, chilly, where we'll find some 30s by tomorrow morning. It's full steam ahead. New York Live is with one of Long Island's best kept secrets, miniature steam engines. This is News for Now for September 30th. I'm Adam Cooperstein. And a phone could provide new clues in the search for Gabby Petito's missing fiance, Brian Laundrie. The Laundrie family lawyer says the feds confiscated the phone and that Brian left the phone at his family's house before going missing. In another development, the Pinellas County Sheriff's Office in Florida says it has turned over surveillance video from a campground that the Laundrie family visited earlier this month before Brian disappeared. The Laundrie's attorney says the entire family left the park together on September 7th. Laundrie's parents say they last saw Brian September 14th. He is the main person of interest in the death of his fiancée, who was found dead in a Wyoming campground after a cross-country trip. The Long Island native's death has been ruled a homicide. Meanwhile, sheriff's deputies in Wyoming say all the attention from the search for Gabby Petito has helped them locate the body of a Texas man who went missing in that same forest. 46-year-old Bob Lowry vanished August 20th. His remains were discovered on Tuesday. Officials say they are still trying to figure out why he died. Police are searching for two teenagers who could be behind this stolen school bus crash in Brooklyn. The terrifying wreck happened Wednesday afternoon in Cypress Hills along Montauk Avenue. The bus hit several parked cars, and you see one of those teens runs off the bus in this surveillance video. There were no other children on the bus at the time of the crash. One person was injured, and it's not clear how the teens may have stolen the bus. In New Jersey, the Toms River School District says COVID cases have now put 6% of the student population there in quarantine. That's almost 900 students. 26 staff members are also in quarantine. Toms River has reported 216 student infections since the school year started. And because of close contacts, 864 students are now quarantined. The superintendent says that number of quarantined students and staff peaked at more than 1,000 three days ago, but now it is trending down. So far, Tom's River has temporarily closed one special education classroom, but no school buildings have had to be closed. A billboard battle is brewing now between two shopping titans. Amazon wants to lease the giant billboard at Macy's flagship store in Herald Square, and Macy's is suing to stop them. Macy's has filed a lawsuit against its landlord, the Kaufman Organization, to stop a potential deal. It would allow Amazon, one of Macy's biggest rivals, to advertise on the billboard that's carried Macy's name for nearly 60 years. Macy says it has a deal to indefinitely occupy that advertising space. In a statement, a Macy's spokesperson says, we expect to realize the benefits of these rights and have the court protect them. Hi there, I'm Storm Team 4 meteorologist Maria La Rosa and wrapping up September, not too bad. We have sun and clouds this afternoon and we're going to see the clouds and then eventually more clearing overnight and you can see that happening by sunrise tomorrow morning. But there's a lot of dry air, clear skies, light winds. Those temperatures are really going to drop. We've got 50 for the low in the city, the coolest we've been in a long time and north and west dipping into the 40s from White Plains at 45 degrees, Poughkeepsie right at 40 and there will be a few 30s out there too. Higher elevations, especially north and west, Woodridge, Liberty, Lake Huntington, and Claryville, all into the mid and upper 30s. With lots of sunshine, though, for the afternoon, a really nice start to October. Riding trains is just part of life in the tri state. And now New York Live has a look at the Long Island steamers that make riding the rails a whole new experience. If you're a train enthusiast or you've got one in your family, then allow me to introduce you to one of New York's best kept secrets. It is Long Island Live Steamers in Yapank, and after being closed last season, it's full steam ahead. All aboard! Yeah! There was a time when railroading was the biggest and most dynamic industry out there, and Long Island Live Steamers wants to preserve that history. So Keith, tell me about the Long Island Live Steamers. This is our 55th year. It started with a very small group of men who were 
not interested in trains as much as they were machinists. A steam engine, although I don't agree, is considered to be a simple machine. And they needed track in order to test whether or not they were successful in their building. So they built a very small loop in the park here just for test purposes. And we've, of course, more than doubled the size of the track since then. This is about as close to full-size railroading as a person who's not with the Long Island can get. So tell me, when the kids come here, what will they learn? Well, they'll learn a little bit of the history because the little ones have never seen a steam engine. It's all brand new to them. I mean, on the surface, this is a miniature yeah. train track, right? Yes, exactly. But beyond that, it's so much more. It's, it is. It is. It's heaven for us. Yeah, and this is a non-for-profit. <laughs> oh, yeah, right. Tickets are free. Yes, and we would like donations, but we certainly don't insist on it. Uh, you ready to do it? Uh, uh, Take tickets, please. Enjoy Thank your train ride. You ready? Hold on. Five feet ahead. Here we go. Stuff. Wait to the other train. Hi, train. I should let everybody know that tickets are free and they are open to the public the second and last Sunday of each month. Girls, did you have a good time? Yeah. <laughs> For more information, you can check out LongIslandLiveSteamers.com. When's the last time you wrote someone a letter? Like, actually put pen to paper. A Queens woman says she writes 10 letters a day, adding up to about 4,000 in the last four years. Sounds like a lot, right? But she still has more than 30,000 to go. And News 4's Ida Siegel shows us the message she's trying to send. Coretta James has a way with words. Letter writing is a favorite pastime. Dear officer, thank you for your service in the NYPD. She spends much of her free time here in Queens writing letters to members of the NYPD. I see you as a person. Short but poignant thank you notes that she delivers in person to precincts all over the city. They put their lives at risk for us. Every time they put on that uniform, that's what they do. And how could I not appreciate that? It started with a few dozen here and there in 2017, but she became more ambitious. Coretta has vowed to write a personal card to every member of the force. She thinks she's done more than 4,000 so far. And how many do you have to go? Uh, well, there's 36,000 officers. And so. you're going to write a card for everyone. But of that's them. my aim. This is the precinct where Coretta dropped off her first batch of cards. It's the 112 here in Forest Hills, Queens. Every officer on duty that day got a card that she personalized on the spot, and she says they were more than grateful. I gave an officer a card and he said to me, in my 26 years on this job, this is my first thank you card. And that made me realize what I was doing it was very much needed. Every time Coretta drops a card off, she records the name in this notebook. She's gotten cards to at least some of the officers at every precinct in the city. The 102, the 103. Coretta is aware her position is not a popular one these days with the controversies surrounding police misconduct, but she believes police brutality is rare. In everything, you'll have people who don't do the right thing, but that's, I'm not going to let that hinder me. She says the many good officers deserve a boost, even if it's just a few words on a card. At the end of your shift, I want you to go home safe to your family. You are somebody, somebody. Grateful for your service, Coretta James, you are appreciated. In St. Albans, Ida Siegel, News 4, New York. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you right back here on News 4 Now tomorrow.